That was a hike and a half, man. <laughs> Left the truck in the dark as usual, one of my old favorite spots. And uh, hiked straight up forever, it seemed. And then uh, fresh snow, everything's it got kind of a little warm, everything's getting kind of real soggy and slippery, so I probably fell down about 50,000 times. And there's just no way. You can't stay dry, man. I don't give a shit what anybody says. When you're hunting, when you're, uh, fix that phone, camera. When you uh, mountain hunt, I mean, you're going straight up for like, I don't know, hour and a half to start. And uh, you're all bundled up, you got your rain gear. You have to have your rain gear on. There's no way out of it, right? And uh, you're just wet by the time you get, it's not like somebody's practicing with their gun down the valley. But you can't even get up, uh, you can't, there's no way you're staying dry. There's just no way. So I always pack another shirt to change into once you get up there so I don't freeze. Since once I get way up the mountain, then I don't want to slow down. But nothing much going on today. Just a one hell of a hike though, man. Holy shit. Anyway, so I got down, changed out of my wet shirt. Now uh, I'm I'm getting close to I gotta get out, I gotta get home. I'm pushing a month of hunting. <laughs> it was good though, good soul food for me. But I gotta get home here pretty quick. But in the meantime, I know I got a few emails from people freaking out because they said they can't hear the video. But I assure you, my phone that I'm talking to right now, it's hooked up the internet. And my YouTube videos are all playing loud and clear, very loud, off of that phone. Including the videos, especially the videos that I've recently uploaded, every single one of them. So I wonder, it's because it's iPhone to iPhone to YouTube, maybe the people that can't hear it is possibly Android? I don't know. I haven't a clue. Uh, maybe try try the uh, plug in your ear, your headset maybe? I really don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know what's going on with your devices. But I guarantee it's not from what I'm doing because my videos that I have listened to on my phone are loud and clear. So, I don't know. I don't have the answer. Sorry. When I get home, I guess maybe the videos made on the computer and loaded are different, received differently on your phones. I don't know. Anyway. What do we got? Steve, I had a rare experience when I was nine years old and had one of the creatures walk to me as I played in our yard. The feeling of being watched had come over me. Then I'd look back behind me. Lo and behold, a very strange creature was looking at me. He was standing in a small wooded thicket about 15 feet behind me. I stood up and turned to face this creature and looked at him for quite a long time. The creature didn't move, which was confusing along with this disbelief. Being a curious child, I had done the high dumbest thing any mega very nasty spelling mistake there. Try saying often. I forgot. Oh man, I can't even read that. Would do. All right, let's just say did the dumbest thing anyone could do and walked into the thicket of woods to see exactly what I was seeing. I was very confused as to what it was. And it was even real, which caused me to explore as the creature didn't move at all as I approached it from the creature's right side. It then began to sway back and forth a few times, which caused me to realize it was real and frightened me. As a child being frightened, I ran from the thicket directly home. Years have passed since that encounter, and I had commissioned an artist to draw what I saw. The first image is the creature I saw, and the artist's representation is excellent. The creature would... Am I in a war zone? I mean, seriously, that was just right behind me. Oh well, they missed. <laughs> this creature was seen in Northern Ohio back in the 70s. From the data that has come from other informational encounters, mine was rare in comparison to facial features as the image shows. This creature was a majestic being standing in the small thicket. I only just saw from its chest up and some of its shoulders and head when I entered the thicket to get a better look at what it was. The creature didn't scream or make any threatening motions towards me except for the swaying. There was also no smell. I've told the story before and was interviewed by the artist's representation from my descriptions has not been shared except at the artist's website. 
Please share if you have the time for others to see this type of creature and its colorings along with the second image of a very small, I feel a very young Sasquatch child, which was imaged on our property in Northern Arkansas after we had inconclusive strange activity happening before I took the image. I had no idea this little fellow was in the image till I looked closer when I downloaded on the computer. Strangely, I've asked for some interpretations of what was, of what was caught from a few other researchers and I've gotten little response to that explanations. It sure looks like a face to me and is very small being under the wood pile as shown in the image. I've kept this brief so just the main points of the encounters and images are presented. Thank you for your efforts in getting information out about this creature along with your hard work in doing so. Please keep my name and contact information private but feel free to share the images and the stories behind them. Um, huh. There's only one image here. I'm on standing on a snowy slope. There's only one image here. It's got the typical pointed out cone head, raised brow, eye, eye. All right, I'm going to show you guys this. I'm sure there must be some other ones somewhere. But there you go. Anybody can make something out of that. And there you go. You're, you're seeing more than I'm seeing. But what I will do, <clears throat> see when I get back, hopefully I can, I can dig up this person's email again and see if there's anything else attached that I missed and I'll include it in the, this video share. If not, I'll have to do it once I get home, okay? Thanks for sounding in, man. The sway to sway thing has got to be either they're getting ready to exit or it's a nervous thing, but I do not know for sure. They sure like watching kids. They have an interest in kids and women, which is kind of nerve wracking too for rural living people. All right. What I'm about to tell you, I'm sure you already know at some level is you're an intelligent man. I recently found your channel by accident. There are no accidents, by the way. And the first email I heard you read was one of an academic physicist who talked to seeing a muscular creature jumping higher and higher with half his body disappearing. That was Edgar. Then the man had lost time and a boot. That goes along with my studies of aliens, my own and human origin. It grabbed my attention as I've been studying a magnetic polar shift that I was told about in a dream, which apparently we are currently going through. Because of the shift, migratory animals are acting crazy. The North Pole is moving, and what they claim is climate change is actually the Earth responding to said shift, which is making the Earth's magnetic field, magnetic field crack. As we speak, there is a South Atlantic anomaly over which they cannot send satellites near or they will shut down due to exposure to electromagnetic waves and protons, etc. from space. I do not think the world is ready to know about this as it may scare some people, but I will leave it up to you to decide what to do with this information. I work as a field agent for a very large organization and get to file strange sightings. I'm also into the whole new age movement somewhat, but since the first disclosure, which was disappointing to say the least, we've been swamped because people feel a little braver now to tell the story. And I keep seeing a correlation between abductees talking about a shift and the spiritual gurus also talking about the shift and huge change coming. All I could find on it was some esoteric bullshit, but it's worth a look see anyway. I know you're busy. But with all this pandemic and strange things happening, well, I want more than ever now to move into the mountains as I was raised on a farm in East U.S. And I don't like the society anymore, nor are many people for that matter. But I do respect those who are smart enough to notice that something strange is happening. I don't know. What do you think? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> I'll show you guys that link. Excuse me. There's the link. You want a screenshot? Oh, it's showing it backwards? Son of a bitch. All right, maybe that's not gonna work unless you take a screenshot of it and then invert it. But there's nothing I can do right now for the editing department for putting links on because I'm just using these two phones, you guys. <clears throat> I found this a day before I stumbled across that video <coughs> of yours, excuse me. I found it too coincidental when that guy talked about the creature jumping and half of him disappearing. Maybe they know something we do not and are not taught about. <clears throat> Thanks for your time. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
and I'm going to be on a podcast talking about a few of my own experiences later on today. Keep telling the truth. All right, thanks for that. It's kind of a different email. Uh, one thing I can say that I read a little while ago was that the elders in the Inuit com communities up north flat out said a little while back that earth, the earth is shift on its axis. And for me, I like listening to the senior population and especially like listening to the indigenous people, especially the elders. That's where I prefer to get a lot of my questions answered or some input to help my brain start to digest some shit that's going on on the planet today, right? But that struck a chord with me, I never forgot it, when the Inuit elders said that the earth has shifted on its axis and that's what's happened. Either way, we got no choice about it. We still got to rock out our lives the best we can, right? No matter what's going on. That's what I'm doing. All right, yeah. Would like to share an experience I had as a teenager. Fourth time sent. I hope it's cooler up there for you guys. Hi again, Steve. Third time sent. Okay. <laughs> Second time. Holy shit. All right, here we go. Hi, Steve. My name is Craig. You can use my first name. I just recently subscribed to your channel, like the content and listening to people's stories as well as your own. I'd like to share with you and your listeners an experience that happened when I was 17. The year was 1979. I grew up in the Santa Cruz Mountains of California. I was with two friends and we hiked to a place called Eagle Del Peak in Lompico. We called it Bald Eagle. <clears throat> These are this area bordered a wildlife refuge area called Loch Lamond Reservoir. The area around Eagle Dell was not accessible except for one dirt road as it was heavily forested and an absolute poison oak hell. It was about midnight and we had a big bonfire going. It was back in the 70s and the area was not really developed yet. The dirt road led to the top of the mountain. At the top, it had been bulldozed so it was an open area maybe 50 feet in diameter. That was the only way to get up there. We had planned to camp for the night. We were having a great time until we heard something crashing through the forest in the distance. We didn't think much of it until starting, until it's starting, it must be started to get closer. It was coming up the ridge from the Loch Lamont side. As it got closer, we became concerned. We were conversing, trying to figure out what it was. It was big and weighed a lot as large sticks were cracking under its feet. We were quite nervous as we threw out theories to one another. Could it be a deer? Maybe a large stray dog? I don't think so. It's walking like a biped from the sound of its steps. That thing is heavy. Listen to it. Mow through the bush. We all know that it was impossible for a human to walk through that area because of how dense it was, let alone in the pitch black. It continued toward us until it was maybe 20 feet from the edge of the brush line, and then it stopped. Nothing but silence. It was watching us. We yelled in the darkness as the flickering fire danced off the brush line behind which the mystery being stood. Who's there? You don't want F with us. We decided it was time to leave. Just as we were gathering our things and dousing the fire, it began to move again and we took off like bats out of hell. I remember I kept looking behind us with my flashlight as we hurried down the dirt road, half expecting it to jump us. Still to this day, my friends and I can't explain what it was. All I know is it was big. It was very heavy and went the brush that would challenge any machete. I don't think it was a human. Anyway, keep the videos coming. Love the content. Sincerely, Craig. All right, thanks for that, Craig. Your story got read, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Fourth time notifying. Wow. The uh, everybody's getting read eventually, right? There's nobody's in any. Uh, it's no known order. It's just as they get got to, they get read. Okay. Thanks for that share, man. That's a shotgun. Mark, this is red. It's kind of funny. I was, we were laughing the other day about people blowing a gasket if they heard a, uh, an email get read again. I haven't heard that one. That's a repeat. And then it's almost like it's a meme because that's that moment you realize, oh, this isn't about you. <laughs> I'm being funny. All right. And don't forget, there's around four or 5,000 people a month coming here brand new. So I'm quite sure I could probably read every single one of them again and 
ship house of people have never heard them anyway. Hi, Steve. My name is Bruce Anderson, 58, and all my experiences so far have been from all over Washington. Where to start? I've watched your channel since the beginning, and I've had more than my fair share of encounters. Three of the encounters involved two brothers and another close friend, and two of the three encounters involved cooking seafood over a campfire. My first welcome to the club and no return moment was when I was about 13. The two brothers and myself set up a campsite in my parents' backyard. We were in a small wooded area in front of where there was a small pond and a marshy area right at the base of the hill. At that time in the early 70s, the area was under a lot of development pressure. So although we only had four acres, there was a good amount of wildlife that would come through. Anyway, it was pretty late. One of the brothers snored like a chainsaw, and the other brother must have been used to it. So I was laying there wishing I could sleep too, listening to frogs. Then the frogs went silent. I heard two soft voices coming from the marsh. One was a woman's voice whispering, and the other a low gravelly voice of a man trying to talk softly. I couldn't make out the words, but the general conversation from what I gathered was that the woman said something like, they are just the neighbor's kids having a night outside. We can go to the other pond. There are more there anyway. The male grumbled a little and that was it. A few minutes later, the frog started chirping and I fell asleep. This next one is probably one of the most surreal experiences of my life and it took place west of Lake Cushman in the early 80s. The same two brothers and another good friend. We stopped to shuck some oysters along the canal when they were still plentiful. And we camped in a spot that is now closed on the way up to the mountaintop. Can't remember the name. Anyway, the spot overlooked a beautiful old growth drainage filled with huge fir and cedar trees some five, six, seven feet in diameter. There's only room for our two trucks and a small campfire. We pan fried those oysters in butter and salt, we drank beer, smoked some good pot and laughed while listening to relatively quiet rock music. When we were done for the night, one of the brothers dutifully pulled, put out the fire. I slept in a net hammock that hung at the edge of the hillside between two relatively small firs, about two feet in diameter. It was a beautiful night with heavy dew. About 3 a.m. I heard two heavy footsteps on the downhill side of my hammock. I was above a log that I used to climb in, so I would guess that the ground was just past the log was about seven feet below my ass. That is where the footsteps stopped. I had my head covered by my sleeping bag to keep the dew off, but I could clearly hear something slightly above my head take a sniff, then huffing out one breath not loud or intimidating, but with the resonance as if it came out of a huge wooden keg. Then two heavy soft step, steps and nothing. I say nothing, but about 10 seconds later, it snowed pine needles for about 20 seconds. And I swear I heard giggling from way above me for just a second. The canopy was at least 150 feet above us. The third story involved the fire conscious brother and the same other good friend. We went to Washougal, Washington to watch the national motocross races there. We were in our friend's 78 GMC before by four. I brought a salmon for us to cook for dinner, and since we needed a campfire to cook it, we decided to go down to the campground by the river, only a few minutes drive away. The campground was pretty full, but there are a few spots in the back at the base of a big hill. Some may consider a mountain. We'd been there about 45 minutes while the fire was heating up, and we started hearing limb snap high up on the hillside. We were cooking that salmon, and the noises on the hillside seemed to be coming closer. It's dusk now, and while we're eating the salmon, we could clearly hear the noises of footsteps along with the brush moving. As we were about done with the fish, a small rock the size of a quarter hit the rear quarter panel of my friend's truck, and that was it. After my friend looked at where the rock hit, which really didn't do any damage, he declared that we are out of here. So we packed up, put out the fire, and left about a quarter of that five pound silver on a piece of foil on the picnic table. Years later, I'm grateful for this particular story because I used it to remind my good friend of what happened many years later, after he said I was obsessed with Bigfoot. I've had many experiences with these people, and if you think these are crazy, well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Sorry about Mr. Macaroni, Steve. My older sister has horses. One of my worst memories is when she asked for me to feed her horse when she was absent for a week one summer. I didn't water the grain enough. The horse died from colic. Oh, ouch. That sucks. I really like that horse. I rode it all the time. Keep up the good work. Maybe someday I will get up the courage to share the real crazy stuff with you and your listeners. I think they're fond of seafood and they think they appreciate a well doused fire. Kind of like smoking the bear later.
and a helicopter right above me. It's like my welcome home freaking helicopter. I don't miss the helicopter. Gunshots and helicopters. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, pretty cool view though, right? Hope they're cleaning up their mess. It's funny how many people shoot the shit out of their guns in the woods and they just destroy shit and leave it everywhere. I drove up that road the other day and there's like a spare wheel sitting there shot, a toilet shot. I'm like, really? I, I just don't understand it. Somebody could actually pack a frickin' put an old toilet in their truck, take it up a log and put it in the ground and then shoot it. Like, is it really that exciting? Really? To shoot a, a frickin' toilet? And then, uh, and then leave it there? People, people, people. Or anyway. Let's see if there's a short one in here while this plane flies over top of me. Another helicopter. I mean, it's what, two helicopters and gunfire. Welcome to civilization, right? Thanks for sharing that, man. I appreciate it. And share more. You got more? Share it. Nothing's too crazy. Nothing. Why is that helicopter coming back? Uh, whatever. Here we go. Maybe the guy with the shotgun will shoot the helicopter down. <laughs> I live in a property on Sylvester Road in 2009 ish in the Mission area, about eight minutes from Davis Lake. I had black bears on the property very regular, too regular, really. They would pick in the burn pile on the west side of the house or come on my deck. It's coming right over top of me. They would pick in the burn pile on the west side of the house or come on my deck. Once even caught a young male in the back of my car. They ripped apart the seat to get an empty McDonald's bag in the trunk, lol. Past the burn pile about 50 feet was dense poplar trees where the deer and bears game trail entered the yard. I was very used to seeing deer and bears come and go from the trail entrance. I was working on the property and I had come inside the house to grab a drink and take a break before heading back outside. My bedroom window faced the trail, giving a nice view in the mornings. Always a few deer or a bear. I stood at my open window for, of my room facing the yard and trail as I took my break. The sun was getting through the trees where this trail was, sun beaming through the spaces between the trees as I was just enjoying the view. While I stood there, while I stood there I could hear what I assumed was a bear, not deer, as they make a lot more noise when coming through the trees. As I was waiting for a bear to exit the trail into my yard, the animal in the trees made noises I've never heard or really can't explain. It felt like it was aware I was watching or that it was toying with me. It never exited the trail. Instead, it changed direction and walked through the bush north towards my shop. It got halfway between the house and the shop and stopped, then made noises again. Some of them sounded almost like laughing, clicks, etc. I had a, I had a Russian Makarov beside my bed. I grabbed it and shot towards the poplars to scare it away, thinking, mostly, still it was a bear. When I did, it didn't run, which freaked me out a bit, as I had done many times with the bears, and they always ran full speed back in the trees. After I shot, it slowly made its way back to the game trail where I first heard it. At this point, I haven't seen it, only small movement through the trees, not enough to say if it was a bear, etc. As I said earlier, the sun was setting through the trees, and as this thing made its way into the spot, I first heard it, it stepped in the bush with the sun at its back. I could see the outline of its head and shoulders. This thing was no bear. I could tell it was tall as hell, and the sun beaming through the hair, I could see it was a light reddish brown and way longer than a bear's coat. Frame of a man standing on two legs, very broad shoulders. Hair looked to be about five inches or six inches long. At this point, it slowly made its way deeper into the trees so I couldn't hear it walking any longer. I really wanted to talk into where it was standing to get a reference. 
I really wanted to walk into where it was standing, get a reference of height, as I made note of which tree limbs were in line with the shoulder height, but I gave it five minutes and took the dogs with me when I made the walk in reference to the branches that were level with this thing's head and shoulders is between eight and nine foot. Always felt uneasy after that, no doubt. <laughs> There's not too many people that join the club and no return that don't feel uneasy after all that shit. And another one from this, another sighting from South West British Columbia, which butts into Washington state. Southwest BC, man, there's so much, so many sightings, encounters, it's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, that's, uh, where am I? That right there is slopes of Mount Curry. Mount Curry is an absolute hotbed. Absolute. Right there. But anyway. I gotta get going. I'm freaking starving. <laughs> got stuff to do. I still got, I still have loads of, I probably got, I got another boat, maybe another truckload, two truckloads of, of items to still move to our new place from here yet. So I gotta go organize some more of that shit and get some productive things done and uh, carry on. And I'm gonna share more again and again and again. I'm gonna get to everybody.